welcome students in this chapter we'll be learning floating point arithmetic and the errors this is a first and introduction chapter in the subject computer oriented numerical techniques or we say numerical computing in this video we'll be learning what is a floating point number why it is called a floating point number and then we'll be learning what is a normalized floating point number how to uh, do arithmetical operations of floating point numbers that is addition subtraction how to do that so there are certain uh, basic laws of arithmetic that we'll be covering here and then what all errors are possible what are the sources of errors types of errors and various formulas for measuring what is the errors that has occurred in your solution the first topic what we'll be learning here is representation of a real number there are two ways of representing a real number so one is the fixed point representation and the other one is a floating point representation so what is fixed point representation as the name suggests fixed point representation is where the decimal point is fixed in the number example is 12.56 so here this is one simple example wherein the decimal point is fixed so this type of representation of numbers is called as fixed point representation this is a type of representation we use in our day to day calculations now the next representation is floating point representation in this representation the decimal point will be floating it means the point moves to and fro depending on the value of the exponent in the given number so let us take the same number 12.56 this 12.56 can be written in various forms so i'll write some of the forms here the value remains same but we will see various representations of this number say the same number can be written as 0.1256 into 10 square now uh, simplify this number 0.1256 into 10 square is 100 when you multiply 100 you will get 12.56 only or you can write it as 1.256 into 10 power 1 or it is just 12.56 which is the example that we have given already into 10 power 0 or we can write 125.6 into 10 power minus 1 or 1256 into 10 power minus 2 so like this various ways we can write all these various formats of numbers represents the same value 12.56 here if you observe this decimal point is moving towards the right isn't it so the since the decimal point moves towards to and fro we call this as floating point numbers we say the point is floating okay that is the reason the name is coined this way now if you have to understand when uh, certain numbers are given like this in a problem you will have to make certain arrangements in order to solve it so remember if you have a decimal point if it is moving towards the right then decrease the power okay decrease the exponent if the decimal point moves towards the left then increase the exponent remember this say if i have 123.5678 into 10 power minus 3 so this is a number if i move the decimal point towards the right side so i will move the decimal point from here to here okay i'll shift the point right side by two digits so the number becomes 12356.78 into 10 power see if it is moving towards the right side you are supposed to decrease the exponent here minus 3 is there i'll decrease 2 from the exponent because i am moving it i'm shifting it to the right side by two digits so minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 hope you understood i have shifted the decimal point to the right by two digits therefore i will decrease the exponent by value 2 so if the same number instead of this if i uh, shift the decimal point towards the left side by one digit so the number becomes 12.35678 right so i have shifted the decimal point to the left by one digit so i need to increase the exponent by 1 so minus 3 plus 1 is minus 
both represents the same value shift the decimal point to the right it means you have to decrease the power shift decimal point to the left then you have to increase the power how much decreasing or increasing you have to make it is equal to the number of digits you shift okay so that is how you change the given number uh, according to your uh, requirement to solve a problem now when you have a number like this this entire number this is called as the mantissa this 10 is your base and this power is called as the exponent okay so this is a floating point number representation you have a mantissa base and exponent this is one way of representing a number you can also represent the number using e so the same number you can write it as 12.35678 whatever e minus 2 so this e represents into 10 power for uh, positive power you can just write e plus 2 or just e2 so this is how you represent a floating point number next we'll see what is a normalized floating point number normalized floating point number is a number in which the mantissa is greater than or equal to 0 0.1 okay mantissa is greater than or equal to 0 0.1 and it is less than 1 this is the definition of a normalized floating point number so what is the meaning of this definition in a given decimal number before decimal point you should not have any non-zero number before decimal point it should always be a zero immediately after decimal point you should not have a zero that is the definition okay that's the meaning of this definition so 12.56 i had given as example so i have to write it as 0 0.1256 okay before decimal point it is zero immediately after decimal point it is non-zero so this is normalized representation of a floating point number and here we have done the modification right so the decimal point is shifted to the left by two digits therefore i need to increase the power by two digits so when there is no power it means it is 10 power 0 so i have to increase the power by two digits this is normalized representation of a floating point number so i'll show you one more example so let me take uh, 1 2 3 point 4 8 into 10 power minus 6 suppose this is a number what is the normalized floating point representation of this i have to write 0 0.12348 because as i told you before point you should not have any numbers immediately after decimal point you cannot have zeros so it is zero immediately after decimal point after a few digits you can have zero so 0 0.12348 into 10 power now what have i done i have shifted the decimal point to the left side so i need to increase the power by how many digits i have shifted i have shifted it by three digits so i need to increase the power by three means minus six plus three so it's going to be minus three okay one more example i'll write 0 0.00246 into 10 power minus 3 okay this is another example here again this is not normalized floating point number because before decimal there is 0 but immediately after this decimal it should not contain 0 but it contains two zeros so i have to shift decimal point to this position so it becomes 0. 246 into 10 power since i have shifted the decimal point to the right the value decreases by how many digits have i shifted i have shifted by two digits so i have to reduce two so minus three minus two is minus five okay this is converting a given number to normalized floating point number almost for all the calculations we will be considering normalized floating point number only so the next topic is floating point arithmetic here we'll be covering three laws commutative law associative law and distributive law i'm sure all of you would have studied these laws in your high school itself so we'll just quickly see what is a commutative law x plus y equals to y plus x 
so i will be covering only laws of addition the same rules is applicable for laws of multiplication also that is x into y equals to y into x will also be the other form of commutative law next is associative law that is x plus y plus z when we have three uh, variables then how do we associate them means how do we group them so x plus y plus z will be equal to x plus y plus z this is associative law of addition the same thing is applicable for multiplication also x y into z is equal to x into y z that is associative law of multiplication next is distributive law distributive law is x into y plus z is equal to x y plus x z this is distribution of multiplication over addition so these are the common laws that governs all the arithmetic operations of the numbers now floating point arithmetic satisfies commutative law means when you have two floating point numbers x and y whether you add x plus y or y plus x it is the answer is going to be same whereas it does not satisfy associative law and distributive law so when you uh, first add x plus y and then add z or if you add y plus z and then add x to it so the answer the lhs and rhs may not be equal sometimes it might be equal but sometimes it might not be equal so the questions under this category will be they will give you certain variables with some values they'll give you a formula also basically it's going to be associative law or distributive law only they might not give you commutative law they'll give you associative or distributive law they'll ask you to verify it most of the times lhs will not be equal to rhs you have to find the value of lhs find the value of rhs and then show that they are not equal okay so associative and distributive laws are not equal in this case now before we see a problem under this uh, category we'll first see there is one approximation technique that you need to use so how do we approximate we have two methods rounding and chopping so i'll tell you what is rounding chopping is just chopping of the numbers okay so we'll see what is rounding so we have all done approximation right so what is how do we do approximation suppose we have a number like this 0.4586 867 so if i tell you approximate it to three digits it means you will consider only the first three digits after decimal point so when you are considering approximation you will modify this third digit based on the value of the fourth digit right so that is how we do the approximation how do we do use usually if it's less than 5 we keep the number as it is if it's greater than 5 we increase one what if it is equal to 5 this is one additional rule that is included under floating point arithmetic when we do three digit approximation then third digit is approximated based on value of the fourth digit if fourth digit is less than 5 then third digit remains same if fourth digit is greater than 5 third digit is increased by 1 so this both things all of us know that is how you have been doing the approximation suppose fourth digit is equal to 5 okay so if fourth digit or in this case n plus 1th digit okay if we want n digit approximation we need to check what is n plus 1th digit if n plus 1th digit is equal to 5 then if third digit is an even number then don't change it okay no change if third digit is an odd number then increase one okay add one to it increase by one so let me take some examples suppose you have a number the same number i'll take 0.45867 if this is a number then Uh, i need three digit arithmetic okay three digit approximation means third digit i have to approximate based on the fourth digit so what is the approximate number 0.459 because the fourth digit is greater than 5 i will approximate 8 to 9 suppose i have 0. Point, suppose i have 0.45827 then 
I will consider third digit as it is because fourth digit is less than five. Okay. Suppose I have zero point four five eight five seven. So I need three digit arithmetic. Fourth digit is exactly equal to five. In that case, check the third digit. If third digit is an even number, write it as it is. If third digit is an odd number, I'll take four five seven five seven. Okay. So I need three digit arithmetic. Fourth digit is exactly equal to five. In this case, see what is third digit. It is an odd number. So increase by one. So it becomes zero point four five eight. Okay. So this is approximations. a uh, technique that you need to apply and based on this approximation only you will have to solve the questions let's see one quick example so this is an example question here we need to verify the distributive law using three digit rounding here before we start solving first thing you need to observe is make sure that all exponents are equal okay so make all exponents equal if they are not equal mostly in such questions definitely one of the exponent at least will not be equal so let's make them equal see here how to make it equal the one that is lesser that you increase to make it same as the exponent which is greater see here 10 power 0 is there this is 10 power minus 3 here we have minus 3 zero is greater than minus 3 so we need to add plus 3 here to make it same as this exponent understood so first thing what we need to do is make it same all the exponents you need to make it same to do that don't reduce the power of a bigger exponent instead increase the power of smaller exponents so minus 3 is smaller here i'm increasing i'm adding plus 3 to it so that it becomes a uh, same as the higher exponent when you are adding plus 3 it means you need to add three zeros after decimal point okay so now what are the values a is 0.345 into 10 power 0 and b is 0.000245 into 10 power 0 and c is 0.000432 into 10 power 0 okay now we will solve the given question so what is lhs a plus b plus c so first i'll find out what is a plus b so when you are uh, writing a plus b i'm supposed to add 0.345 and 0.000245 and this is into 10 power 0 exponent we can write it at once in the end because anyways the exponents are equal now add it you will get 0.345245 into 10 power 0 after each arithmetic operation we are supposed to do the rounding so since we are supposed to do three digit approximation i will consider only first three digits and the third digit i'll approximate depending on the value of the fourth digit so i will get 0.345 into 10 power 0 because fourth digit is 2 third digit remains as it is now i'll add plus c to it a plus b plus c so what is a plus b 0.345 plus what is c 0.000432 into 10 power 0 now i'll add this i'll get 0.345 432 into 10 power 0 again i'll make it approximate answer i'll approximate it to three digits we will get 0.345 into 10 power 0 because fourth digit is less than 5 okay so this is the answer for my lhs this is the answer for lhs now let's see what is the value for rhs so rhs first i have to do b plus c then i need to add a to it so i'll find out b plus c b plus c is 0.000245 plus 
into 10 power 0. You get 0 0.000677 into 10 power 0. Since we have to use normalized floating point numbers, we need to write it as 0 0.677 into 10 power minus 3. So this is going to be the answer for B plus C. Next, we need to add A to this. So when we add A, A is 0 0.345 plus this I have to write it as per the standard form. I have this value I will write it as per the ex by equating the exponent. Now I get 0 0.345677 into 10 power 0. So this I will approximate it to 3 digits. I will get 0 0.346 because fourth digit is greater than 5 into 10 part 0 so now this is the answer for your L RHS okay clearly you can see LHS is not equal to RHS okay so therefore you can write LHS is not equal to RHS therefore given statement is proved okay so this is how you need to solve how uh, I'll just repeat the steps quickly so first step is first you have to observe whether exponents are equal or not and make the exponents equal how to make exponents equal lesser exponent should be made equal to the greater exponent so add some value to the lesser exponent so that it becomes equal now how whatever number you are adding to the power that many zeros you have to add after the decimal point so this is one thing you need to know next is you have to find out what is the value of LHS and RHS here A and B you are adding so when you are adding A and B A has a different power B has a different power hence you consider this way okay A and B values and then add C to it uh, after every step take the approximated value as per three digit or two digit rounding whatever they have given then take the RHS in RHS you see B plus C is there and B plus C is has same exponent in the given question so directly you can add because the exponents are same you need not have 10 power 0 you need to have uh, exponents as same in this case B and C has same exponents so directly we can add without taking this zeros you can directly add and get this answer once you get this answer, next you need to add it with A. When you are adding it with A, make the exponent equal. So we are adding this three zeros here. And now consider the approximate answer. Definitely LHS will not be equal to RHS. Therefore, you can say that the given statement is proved. Okay. That's it for this video. Practice many questions of this same type that is floating point number arithmetic by using rounding technique. If you want questions for practicing, we have mentioned our email ID and uh, our other contact links in the description below. You can click on that, send us a message, we will send you practice questions so that you can practice those questions and in case you have any doubts, you can get back to us also. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.